Hi, I'm Kai with Kimray, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the energy exchange glycol pump and the electric glycol pump. If you've enjoyed this content and you want in-person training, uh, visit the training page on our website. There you can schedule us to come out to your place, uh, or you can come here to one of our Kimray stores and we can do the training in person. The energy exchange glycol pump um, operates in a natural gas dehydration system. Um, natural gas dehydration is the process of removing water vapor from natural gas. You don't want your natural gas to be saturated with water vapor, um, but just removing that water early in the process is going to save a lot of trouble downstream. Um, the energy exchange glycol pump helps in the natural gas dehydration system uh, because it circulates triethylene glycol through this equipment. Uh, triethylene glycol loves water, so when it's circulated through the system and comes into contact with the saturated or wet gas, uh, it helps to absorb that moisture and remove it from the gas. Um, you can see our, our glycol pump there in the middle. Um, the two pieces of equipment on the right side are an inlet scrubber and then the contact tower, or some people call it an absorber. But those are the two pieces of equipment that the gas will go through. Normally, this equipment is downstream of compressors. So after the gas is compressed, uh, it will go through this equipment. Sometimes uh, this equipment can be directly on the well location, and there'll be one dehydration system per well. Um, but a lot of the times these are in gathering gas gathering systems. So these it's really big equipment. Um, gas has been gathered, you know, over a certain area and comes into to one common line and goes into one DI system. They could be sized from half a million cubic feet per day all the way up to, you know, 30 to 40 million cubic feet per day. Uh, it just really depends on on what the producer is trying to do and how much gas volume they have. Uh, but all the equipment works the same, it's just the size difference between those systems. The energy exchange pump is called the energy exchange pump because it exchanges the pressure that's in the contact tower um, for movement of the pump and circulation of that glycol through that system. It does not require any external power to operate, um, just the operating pressure in the contact tower. Um, our PV energy exchange pump operates all the way up to 2,000 PSI. Uh, we also have a small cylinder or SC pump that can operate less than 500 pounds if your operating pressures are lower. Typical operating pressure though for a dehydration system is around you know, 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. Uh, as the pressure from the contact tower um, comes into the pump um, on the high pressure inlet side, uh, it's carrying that glycol with it along with some gas. Um, there is a, um, a consumption rate uh, for our pumps. Each size pump has a different gas consumption rate. Um, some of that gas from the tower will be in that glycol. Um, because it's, use, it's using that pressure to help operate itself. Um, that gas is then captured later on in the process, um, either through the, the flash separator. Um, so you, you have to be aware of that, and you have to be ready for that. So if you are um, concerned about uh, gas emissions, that's some of those emissions you have to calculate for. Uh, some people you know, can capture that gas, recompress it, uh, use it elsewhere. A lot of the times it's just um, going to a flare or combustor and being disposed of. Um, but we have charts uh, for the, that gas consumption rate. Um, but as that glycol goes through our glycol pump and circulates throughout the rest of the system, it's having that water removed from it uh, so that it can be dry glycol and be ready to absorb more water from the contact tower and, and the gas. Um, and then that cycle just continues over and over and over again. Because it does not require any external power, um, you know, these systems can run 
uh, with no electricity, even though there is some automation elements that can be added in to a DHI system. Um, at its basic form, it can operate with no electricity, um, not only the glycol pump, um, but also all the other pneumatic controls that are in the system. Uh, a few things that you need to, to have available, either if you're going to have us size it for you or if you're going to try to use our sizing calculator. But what you're going to need is the, the pressure in the contact tower, the allowable water content, um, and that's just in, in pounds of water per million cubic feet. A typical allowable water content is seven pounds of liquid for every million cubic feet. The less water you have, the drier your gas is. So, you know, it could get down to maybe five pounds of water per million cubic feet. But that's something that you'll need to know. Our calculator starts you out at five pounds of liquid per million cubic feet, but you can adjust that and change that. Um, it also auto populates the glycol to water content. And that is just saying that you need three gallons of glycol to be circulated. Um, to remove uh, one pound of water. Newer glycol, you know, is gonna be probably closer to only needing to circulate um, two gallons of glycol. Uh, as your glycol ages and as, you know, it becomes contaminated or maybe you overheat your glycol, it'll become less efficient at absorbing water. So you'll need to increase um, your circulation rate to remove the same amount of water. Uh, but it starts out at three, um, but you can adjust that uh, as you see fit. Uh, gas temperature you're going to need, and that's at the contact tower. After you input all of these things into the glycol sizing calculator, um, you'll hit the calculate button, and that will give you a gallons per hour flow rate. Now that's talking about how much glycol you need to circulate to remove enough water to get down to your allowable water content. You can change the flow rate to gallons per minute um, to make it a little bit easier to calculate your stroke rate for your glycol pump. All of our part numbers um, for our glycol pumps are all gallons per hour. So like the 450 glycol pump, is its maximum flow rate is 450 gallons per hour. So it's an easy way to remember that and to get a, a general idea of its flow capacity of glycol. Um, our 210 pump can flow 210 gallons per hour uh, and so on. Um, so after you get your calculated flow rate, you can use the product finder on our website to help you find the correct sized glycol pump. Um, you just follow the steps and it'll, it'll point you in the right direction. You can always give us a call or our product support team uh, if you need help with this process or selecting the correct sized uh, glycol pump. Another way that you can size your glycol pump, if you already know the circulation rate that's required, uh, you can go into the uh, specifications for any size pump and you'll be able to see this chart here. So this is the uh, energy exchange capacities chart. Uh, so it'll give you the glycol flow rate um, per stroke, um, or it'll tell you how many strokes you need to get um, to a gallon, uh, and also the um, gallons per hour or strokes per minute. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that you can come to the answer of the speed of the pump. Um, but the the speed of the pump is adjusted by the speed adjustment valves on the pump, those two needle valves. You want to adjust them evenly when you're adjusting the speed of the pump. Uh, if you adjust one side more than the other, you'll have uneven stroke, which cause, causes issues, causes uneven wear. Um, so you want to make sure you're adjusting those at the same amount. Um, but the more open they are, the higher the volume of glycol going through the pump and the faster the pump will stroke back and forth. Um, one stroke of the pump is uh, movement from one side to the other. Uh, sometimes there's confusion about if it's there and then back, is that one stroke? But one movement of the pump equals one stroke. And so keep that in mind when you're calculating your flow rate and pump speed. Uh, one movement equals one stroke. Um, so the, each pump has a 
a stall point. Uh, so that's when the operation pressure of the tower plus all the friction loss throughout the system. So that's friction loss in piping through filters, the operating pressure of your uh, flash separator. All of those things combined together, that's your total system pressure drops. Um, so that cannot exceed a certain amount, and these charts point that out. So the higher the operating pressure of your contact tower, the more uh, room you have, the more flexibility you have um, with your stall point. Um, lower operating pressures are going to have a very narrow margin of um, operation before you stall the pump. I would encourage you guys to look at each one of these charts and see where your operating pressure is uh, with your specific pump and make sure that you're within that operating envelope. Um, if you are having trouble with your pump stalling out or not being able to operate, um, that's usually the first place that I'll point people to is making sure that um, you know, your, your filters are changed out. There's not a high pressure drop across them. The operating pressure of your flash separator, um, is on the lower end. Um, and just making sure that the system is working well, where the pump, uh, can operate and not stall out. Filtration, you know, is one of those things in a, in a dehy system that is one of the most important, uh, the overall health of your dehy equipment. Uh, is really dependent on how well you're filtering out the glycol. There's a lot of contaminants um, in the glycol, in your gas as it's circulating through the system uh, that the glycol will pull out of that gas, you know, especially if it's downstream of compressors. So you've got lube, lube oil, you've got, you know, different contaminants even from the well and the gas itself that can damage not only our glycol pump, but it can also... Um, hinder the other equipment from working well. You want to make sure that you've got um, both solid particle filters and hydrocarbon filters um, on your DHI system. Make sure you're checking them on a regular basis. Make sure they're clean and operating well. And that's just going to extend the life of your pump uh, by a great deal. And making it's going to make sure that you're dehying the gas um, to a point where you can sell it and continue to sell it. Uh, so just Filtration um, is one of the one of the biggest things. Uh, so operating pressures, temperatures, and filtration, those are kind of the big the big three and where I point people to if they're starting to have issues um, with their system. Um, when it comes time to repair your glycol pump, you can send it to uh, a Kimray store or you can try to tackle it yourself. Um, we have a good repair video. There's a lot that goes into the glycol pump a lot of small pieces, um, a lot of things to check to make sure that uh, it's repaired correctly. Um, you know, throwing a repair kit um, in a, a damaged glycol pump, you know, might help you limp by for a certain amount of time. But if there are damaged cylinders or piston rods or like other components in there that you're not catching that need to be replaced that don't come in the repair kit, you need to be aware of those so that way you can get the, the longest life out of your glycol pump when you put it back into service. If Kimray does the repair for you, it comes with a new uh, warranty, and we always test our pumps before we send them out after repair. Uh, so you can be assured that it's going to work correctly if you have us repair it. Uh, you know, it's like getting sending in your engine uh, to the OEM to be repaired. You know it's going to be done right and well. A lot of our store locations uh, also do an exchange program for our glycol pump. Uh, so you bring in a uh, glycol pump that needs to be repaired, and we already have a repaired one of the same size on the shelf ready for you. So you exchange that for the repaired one, and you can immediately take that out to your location and put it into service. Uh, that way you're not having to wait on us repairing your pump. Hopefully you have a backup pump already on location that you can continue to operate uh, while the one that failed uh, is being repaired. So now I want to talk about the electric glycol pump. Now you might be thinking, why use the electric glycol pump? The energy exchange pump sounds so cool. I'm only going to use that. Well, the electric glycol pump gives you some advantages. Uh, one, 
there is no gas consumption for the electric glycol pump. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, having a, a flare or dealing with that gas that's entrained in the glycol or that gas that is consumed by the pump, by the energy exchange pump. Um, the electric glycol pump only has dry glycol going through it. There's a couple other pieces in a, an electric glycol system that you need. You need a level control and a dump valve on the contact tower. It goes directly from the contact tower in an electric pump system. It goes directly from the contact tower through that dump valve into your flash separator. Um, so the wet glycol that has most of the contaminants in it has you know, those hydrocarbons, um, that never goes through the electric glycol pump. After it goes through the flash separator, all of the heat exchange, the reboiler, um, all the filtration, then at that point, it's dry, clean glycol. Then it goes through our pump, gets pressurized, and then goes back to the top of the tower. Um, so you're, you're not getting the same volume of trash and contaminants through the electric pump like you are with the energy exchange pump. So the, the life of the electric pump is going to, to last longer. Those elastomers are going to last longer. Uh, you do need power. You size it normally, so you can still use our sizing calculator to size your glycol flow rate. But then you also need to size the appropriate motor to go on that electric glycol pump. You can put the electric motor with the electric pump. Uh, on a skid, you can order a, a package from us that all comes together, but just make sure that the motor is the appropriate size uh, to work within the operating pressure and flow rate of your system. Another advantage to using the electric glycol pump is there is no minimum operating pressure. Uh, as I mentioned before, the PV energy exchange glycol pump can go down to 400 pounds. If you try to operate it less than that, um, it won't work. It's going to stall. Uh, the electric pump can go all the way down to zero pounds if you wanted it to um, because it's not reliant on the operating pressure of the tower. Uh, your tower pressure can be all the way down to zero. It doesn't matter. You know, as your, as your pressure increases, that's going to increase the amount of horsepower you need to push that glycol into the tower. That's why sizing the motor correctly is so important. Um, but it's, it has no minimum operating pressure range. Another advantage to using the electric glycol pump is you can tie it into your automation system um, because it is an electric product. Um, you know, turning off, turning on the pump, adjusting the speed of the pump, that can all be tied into your automation system so you can see when it's running, what RPMs it's running at, um, another good thing about the electric pump is that you can also put a flow meter downstream of it to monitor the output or the flow rate of the electric glycol pump. So if you are needing to increase the flow rate um, of the glycol, you can do that remotely uh, and also verify that the flow rate has increased and to what it has increased to. Um, so couple of automation elements to the electric glycol pump that can be an advantage to producers. Um, the repair process, um, you know, similar to any repair process for our product, if you bring it to a, a Kimray uh, store, we can repair it. It comes with a new warranty. You can also repair the electric glycol pump yourself. We offer repair kits for this product. Um, if there isn't already a repair video out for it, there will be soon, uh, so keep an eye out for that. If you want more content on the energy exchange pump or the gas dehydration system processes, uh, we've got a whole playlist for that. Uh, check out the repair videos, a lot of content surrounding these products. Um, so be sure to check that out. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one.